Welcome to the Gospel Online channel. Really glad that you could join us. We're having a look at passages from the Gospel of John in this series, which look at Jesus not being God. We're going to have a look today, particularly at a verse in John chapter 10, but we're also going to have a look at the, the context. So the verse in question is John 10 verse 30, which says, I and my father are one, or I and the father are one. So we're going to have a look at the verse, but we're going to have a look at the context as well in which it sits. So um, thank you for joining us on the Gospel Online. Remember to subscribe to the video uh, so that you get all of the all of the talks come straight to you. And please feel free to comment in the comment section below, particularly on other things that you'd like the Gospel Online channel to have a go at looking at. So John chapter 10 uh, and this verse in uh, verse 30. Let's have a look at the context first. Jesus is in Jerusalem. He's been there for uh, a few months uh, in and around Jerusalem. Uh, in the previous chapter, a few months before, in John chapter 9, Jesus has healed the blind man. And this has generated quite a lot of discussion uh, by Jesus and with the, the leaders, the Jews, as they're called in the Gospel of John, the ruling authorities about who Jesus is and what he's doing. And it's generated quite a lot of uh, anger against Jesus, as uh, the Gospel of John demonstrates. And Jesus continues his criticism of the, the rulers of uh, the Jews in John chapter 10 with an extended metaphor, which uh, they would have been very familiar with, that of sheep and shepherds. And Jesus in verse 11 of John chapter 10 and verse 14 describes himself as the good shepherd, uh, the implication being the shepherds, the rulers themselves, were doing a bad job of demonstrating to the people what it was to live a godly life, what it was to understand who God is and the implications for life. And Jesus is saying, well, I can demonstrate to you the good way and I can demonstrate to you what the Father is really like by the things that I do and the things that I say. And, and people who are willing to listen to me will receive benefit and they become my sheep. He is the good shepherd, showing them the good way and people who listen are the sheep that follow him. Now, again, this creates uh, discussion amongst the, the rulers and say, well, we don't really like what Jesus is saying. He's, he's, he's a bit possessed, this guy. And other people are saying, well, hang on, he's, he's doing things that uh, nobody else can do. He's healing bl the blind man from John chapter nine. So we're going to have a look at uh, verse 22 onwards and we're going to unpack these verses uh, and have a look at what Jesus does say and what Jesus doesn't say uh, and what other people think about uh, the whole thing. So in John chapter 10 and verse 22 we find Jesus in Jerusalem uh, at one of the, the feasts uh, in Jerusalem and in the temple. Jesus is walking in the temple uh, and in, as he's walking, uh, the Jewish leaders come round Jesus and gather round him and say, well, come on, give it to us straight. Tell us plainly, none of this metaphor, none of this parable business that you've been doing. We want to know from your own mouth, are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one that we are looking for? Now, Jesus says, I'm, I'm not going to play this game. Uh, you know full well who I am. You've just got to admit it. Uh, but you're not willing to admit it because of the implications. He says, actually, I'm not going to tell you because actually you've got enough evidence to show that I am who I claim to be. That is the son of God. All of the miracles that I've done, including the one in John chapter nine, which you're so cross about, um, show plainly who I am. And I'm doing these works on behalf of my father. Um, he says in verse 25, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. I don't need to sell you. You should be seeing the miracles and recognising them for what they are. They are works on behalf of God. But they don't believe because they don't want the implication of having to follow Jesus. You believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. So those who are willing to listen, those who are willing to be led in godly ways, will follow Jesus. I know them and they follow me. And Jesus gives his followers real benefit. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So Jesus says, the people who 
are given to me as my sheep will receive benefit of being able to follow me, being given eternal life, and nobody can take that away from me. Now, Jesus is explaining in the next verse quite an interesting point, that the work that he's doing is the work that is given to him by God. And the people that are following him are also given to him by God. Verse 29, he says, my father, which gave them me, so the, the followers that are willing to listen, is greater than all. Now, there's an interesting point here that Jesus is admitting his dependence on his father, as he does in a number of places in the Gospel of John. He recognises that God is greater than he is, and the works that he's doing, he is doing on God's behalf. He is revealing who God is and what God is like by the things that he's doing, and those that follow will be able to do the same. God is revealed by individuals who themselves are not, not God themselves, but are doing God's work. Jesus is saying, my father is greater than all, including, by implication, me. But I'm doing the same thing as God. No man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So, so Jesus and God have got the same purpose. They've got the same attitude towards those who follow him. That is, that they will never perish. They'll be given eternal life. And they're not going to be plucked out of the hand of Jesus because God has done this work and Jesus has done this work on his behalf. And this same attitude, this mind, this purpose, this way of thinking in relation to the work that they're doing is expressed in verse 30. I and my father are one. Jesus has the same thinking as his father. There's going to be benefit for those who follow. He's got the same mind and the same purpose as God to bring benefit to those that are willing to listen. Now, at this point, the Jews who are angry with Jesus anyway are looking for any opportunity to get at Jesus. They don't want this man because he's a troublemaker as far as they're concerned. He's causing them difficulties, which they don't like. And verse 31 shows their reaction. The Jews take up stones again uh, to stone him. So this isn't the first time they've wanted to destroy Jesus and get rid of this troublemaker. And Jesus says, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've done loads of good things. I've done loads of miracles in my father's name. Many good works I've showed you from my father. Which of, which of these works are you gonna stone me for? And they say, oh no, no, it's not about the works which they couldn't deny. This is about your claim to be God. You've just said it, I and my father are one. Um, you're blaspheming, making yourself a God. And Jesus says, well, hang on, you know this. People work on behalf of God all the time. Every ruler should have been a good shepherd but they weren't doing their job. And Jesus quotes from one of the Psalms, Psalm 82, and says, even in your own Bible, you will acknowledge that people are called gods. He says, is it not written in your law in verse 34? I said, ye are gods. Now this passage in uh, Psalm 82 is referring again to rulers, to judges, and judges that are unrighteous and doing a bad job. And Psalm 82 is a challenge to those rulers, to those leaders to say, well, what do you think you're doing? You're not leading the people in a good way. And it's exactly the same challenge that Jesus is laying down in front of uh, the rulers in his day. You're not doing a good job. You should be doing a better job. And yet these unrighteous judges are themselves called gods. How is that the case? They're actually also called in that passage children of the most high. And Jesus says, well, if your own Bible says that people like that can be called gods, what's the problem? What, what is the problem? Um, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures can't be broken, say you of him whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world, you're blaspheming. I'm not claiming to be God. What I'm saying is I'm the son of God. Uh, friends, we're all children of the most high, said the psalm, and actually you should behave as if that is the case and he returns to the point that he's made the works that i'm doing i'm doing on behalf of god the way that i am living and the message that i'm bringing and the thoughts that i'm expressing reveal to you what god is like he says if you don't believe the works of my father don't believe me if i don't do them don't believe me it's nice and simple but if I do do them, that has implication. That has a real impact. 
if I do, though you believe not, believe the works. Look at what I'm doing. I'm demonstrating power and authority. Listen to the words that I'm saying, and you too could follow me. The Jews are not happy with this, and again, they, they try to take him, but Jesus escapes out of their hands and leaves Jerusalem. Um, but there are many people who are willing to listen to, to Jesus and go to him. And at the end of the chapter, in verse 42, it says, many believed on him there. So there's a big distinction between what the Jews actually think Jesus is saying and what Jesus is claiming. Jesus is claiming not to be God. There are people in the Old Testament who were called gods and they were unrighteous. That They were mighty, mighty men who should have known better. And Jesus is saying, well, I'm revealing through the way that I am and the things that I'm saying and the things that I'm doing, what God is like. God reveals himself through beings who themselves are not God. And Jesus is one of those. He is claiming, quite rightly, to be the son of God. He is claiming to do the work of God on God's behalf, but isn't claiming to be God himself. So coming back to this verse that we started with in verse 30, John 10, uh, John 10 verse 30, I and my father are one. Jesus is claiming to have the same mind, the same purpose, the same thoughts as God himself. But if we take it to mean that Jesus is God himself, we're making the same mistake that those who were listening to Jesus in the first century were making. Uh, the Jews misunderstood what Jesus was claiming. He wasn't claiming to be God at all. He wasn't blaspheming. He was saying, listen, I'm doing God's work because I am the son of God and I reveal God to you by those works that I'm doing. And if you listen, if you see the works, that means you should believe. So there we go. That's a quick run through. Um, a chapter in John chapter 10, uh, Jesus not claiming to be God himself, but claiming to be the son of God working on his behalf. Thanks for taking the time to watch this gospel online uh, video. Um, there'll be more to come. Uh, there are previous videos that you can watch in this series taken from the gospel of John. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Um, click the button to subscribe below. Don't forget to comment. Uh, if you've got comments, then uh, we'll try and get back to you with some replies. And again, if you've got any other suggestions that you'd like to make in relation to what the Gospel Online channel can provide for you, please make suggestions again in the comments below uh, and then maybe future videos. We can do that as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, you've been watching the Gospel Online uh, and we'll see you again. Mm -hmm.